<laughs> Hi, just pretending. Uh, just want to go over the first uh, leadership strategy for um, a little bit more in depth for, for what we were doing the other day in a practical. So effective communication is our first um, strategy and there's a few bits and pieces within this one um, that you hopefully take out and then use yourselves. So the first one is the use of the whistle. Okay, I cannot press the importance of having a whistle enough. It is easily the best tool for any PE teacher or coach. Okay. In particular, we like to use the Fox 40 in our department. Reason is that it is peeless, okay, and it will not uh, break down in the wet. Okay, if you have a big group like this, and this is where the effective functioning comes in, big group like this, going mental, huge game of dodgeball, any activity like this, it's organised chaos. Okay, if you try to get the attention of these people without using a whistle, it's going to take you forever. Okay, doing it um, vocally or doing it verbally, okay, it's just not going to work. Using a whistle, it's a high pitched sound. Okay, it's piercing. It'll get through. Okay, and as long as you've set up that whole concept of one whistle means freeze, two whistles means to come in. Okay, you really need to push that. Then they'll know what to do. So they'll hear a whistle and they will freeze. Okay, that means that you can then explain things to them, and it'll mean that you'll save your voice. Okay, when you're yelling like this guy. And you know, you've got a whole lesson or a whole session that you need to teach. You do not want to be yelling the whole time. Okay, so getting them in, getting them to listen, getting them to sit down like these kids. Okay, that means that they will uh, get the information a lot quicker. You know, your sitting down time will be shortened, and it means that they'll be able to get up and they'll be able to get back out to the activity. They'll get more reps of the activity in. They will learn more and they'll become better at the activity. Okay, so that's why we want to use our whistle because it will affect the functioning of our group in a positive way because they'll get to actually have more reps. Okay, they'll get to participate in the physical activity more. Moving on to our voice. Okay, we have some teachers that we know of who are really loud at one end of the spectrum. Okay, and then we have other teachers at the other end who are really quiet. It's a little bit like Goldilocks, okay, with her porridge. Okay, you want to be just right. You want to be just in the middle. So at times in your lesson, yeah, you'll need to be quite loud, okay, because you'll be outside and there's other people and you need to be able to talk over music and stuff like that. But overall, you know, you just need to find a nice little little space where you can be heard. Okay, if you're too loud and you're yelling all the time, just like this person here, the drill sergeant, then people switch off. People don't like being talked to. Okay, they don't like being talked at. They, they want to be part of it. They want to be part of the conversation. So they'll just switch off. Okay, they'll cover their ears. Okay, or they won't pay attention at all. Okay, alternatively, if you can just drop down and you, you're nice and quiet, and one of the best teachers I've ever seen uh, was actually Jerry Collins' sister. Her name is Helen Collins. And I was on a teaching placement with her. And what she would do, she would just be really quiet. She'd bring it herself down to the level of the students. And because she was quiet, I mean, the students actually had to come in closer in order to be able to hear what she was saying. But she had the attention of every one of those kids. And she didn't have the biggest voice in the world at all. Okay, so there's different techniques like that um, that will get kids to listen. You don't have to be loud. Okay, you just need to be at the right level. Okay, and then again, it means that they'll come in, they will get that information, they will take it on board and then you can get back out and you can do the activities. The tone of your voice is really important. Okay, you've got to consider yourself to be a salesman. And if, if your tone is just really boring, okay, if, if it's just maintaining a monotone sort of um, sort of level, then you know, you're not going to be able to sell your product. And your product is your lesson. Your product is your skill that you're trying to teach. Okay, so the thing about Ron Burgundy here on the left here, he's happy, he's motivated, okay, and People are going to want to buy a car off him. Okay, down in the other corner here on the on the right hand side, he's sad. Okay, nobody wants to buy something off a sad person. Nobody wants to buy something off someone who's boring and not interested in their product that they're trying to sell. Okay, so again, if you can be happy, if you can be really motivated and be uplifting and enthusiastic with your tone, okay, then someone's going to want to sell or buy your product, I should say. Okay, and if you aren't and you're sad or negative, Nancy, people aren't going to want to pick up what you're putting down. Your body language is hugely important, okay? Things like crossing your arms, okay, is a really negative barrier that you're putting between you and the people that you're trying to talk to, okay? There's lots of examples here on this image in particular. So, yeah, overall, you need to be really open, okay? You can see this lady here is really tense, okay? This is an example from a, a clip from YouTube. Um, this chick's real, real, real tense. She, she's getting really worked up, um, and her class is 
behaving accordingly. They're not interested in, in what she's having to say. Okay, she's really um, getting worked up by the fact that they're not listening and she's getting more and more agitated. Okay, and her body language is really, really negative. So you need to be really positive with your body language. Okay, if we go back to this image again, you can see that she's dropping down to the level of the students. She's not up in their face and, and up in really, um, <clears throat> I guess, um, quite scary, particularly for these younger kids. Okay, so she's being really welcoming. Okay, she doesn't have any of her appendages crossed. All right, you know, you see that she's um, just behaving in a manner that is, is receptive to them coming in and really open to them being comfortable. Okay, the last effective um, communication strategy that was something we did quite a lot outside the other day was questioning. Okay, so if you give instructions, it's really important that you need to clarify that everyone in that group has picked up those instructions. So asking questions after you've given the instructions just to make sure that they've understood is really important. So it might be something like, you know, so what do we do again when we go to the, to, um, when the whistle blows twice? Or, um, or you know, how, how do we get into our groups? Or, um, you know, could be something like, uh, what do we do at the blue cone? Okay, what happens when I blow my whistle twice? Okay, things like that, and you just ask the individuals those questions, and it just clarifies the understanding around that. Okay, and then that'll mean that you know their brain will take over; it'll start being um, locked into their memory. Okay, so there's some examples there of how you can use effective communication. Okay, remember you do need to pick at least two of these strategies overall. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is the use of group management. Okay, so fill out the um, the Google Form or worksheet that I give you for this. Okay, and hopefully you'll have a deeper understanding. Start thinking about ones that you're going to use yourselves. All right, let's Lambert out.